Thank you, Minister Harris, and we say praise the Lord to everyone. Praise the Lord. All right, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is a great God, and God is a good God. That's why we say yes to the Lord, to his will and his way. Now, you don't have to say yes to it if you don't want to. Not going to change God at all. Not going to change God. What if some don't believe God's word? Will that make God's word in effect? No, God's word is still staying. It's staying. So we might well say yes to your will and yes to your way. Yeah. Amen. We just, I hope y'all had a prosperous day today. I hope things went well with you. And uh, you was blessed. And what you had set out and endeavored to do. Because we're on a journey. Some days, you'll be a winner. And some days look like you just out there. But long as you are in Christ Jesus, as long as you stay in the will of God, everything is going to be all right. I'm here to tell you that. I, I, I've, I've been in places and situations that I didn't know what I was going to do, how it was going to turn out. But I, I, I called on Jesus. I was putting my trust in him. And God made a way. God made a way. And he will make a way for you. Amen. We're coming live on Facebook Live and YouTube from 17, I mean 7759 South Eberhardt Avenue in the Chatham community. Right here in the Windy City of Chicago, Illinois. Amen. Where the table is spread it, and the feast of the Lord is going on. Why don't you come on in and enjoy this supper with us? Amen. This word of God. We thank the Lord again. And we're just rejoicing. Even in challenging times that we're dealing with today, we're rejoicing in the Lord. Because we know that in the end, we're going to win. We know that. In the end, we're going to win. You might be on the losing end now. You, you might look like the underdog. <laughs> but you stay with God. Amen. In that fourth quarter, something's going to happen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to take a little time and ask, are there any questions before we go into my prayer? Yes, ma'am. My question is, my question is, in um, Second Chronicles, I was um, going through the fifth, sixth, and seventh verse, and I know that was the period of time where uh, dedicated the Second and Chronicles and what five, six, and seven. But I want to end up where I, our scripture that we use in my people which are called by my name. Okay, chapter seven. humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. But my question was, because as I was reading it, and it, I know it was a dialogue between Solomon and God, but I think it was a period of time where it was a while that he had answered Solomon because in the beginning of chapter seven, God's glory filled that temple presence of God was really among them. But then when you get to the 14 verse, then he telling them all that. So was it a, it was a gap in there, right? Is that when they went to yeah. Babylon and captivity? Let us, let us keep in mind that when we study the Bible, it is not in chronological order. Right. Okay. And so therefore we have to study the whole picture to be able to get, make sense of it, to be able to put it in order. Now when 
when, when God anointing came in and filled that temple, Solomon, Solomon was just starting out as a king. And he had a mind to please God. You remember God asked him a question. So what can I do for this Solomon? Since you, 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 you had this big celebration and, and the temple was all open and then you you gave and you 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 sacrificed to me. And he asked him, what can I do for you? Solomon, he, Solomon said to God, just give me wisdom. In other words, that I learned how to deal with your people. This is a great people. I'm just a young man. I don't know. I'm just getting into it. I need your guidance, God. I need you to give me wisdom. And God said, because of that, because of that glory that Solomon was giving to God, God, the glory of God came into that temple and filled it. Now this, when, when he talks about it, my people, this is the period of time when uh, uh, the people then, 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 then turned their back on God. And Solomon himself had did some foolish things. So this is where this come into play. The people had turned from God, and God is saying, to get it right with me, my people need to do what? They need to, first of all, they need to repent. <laughs> See, this is what we got to do. When we done messed up with God, we, we just can't go to God, but it's, the Hebrew writes that come boldly to the throne of God. No, you better, you, if you come, you better come repenting. Isaiah in the sixth chapter, I'll be that the, the, uh, the uh, first chapter of Isaiah. God said to Isaiah, uh, I can do something for you, but uh, you come and let's reason together. Because you, you, you don't turn from me, Israel. You out there chasing other idols. And I told you, he, oh Israel, the Lord that God is one. And you out there worshiping in the grove with the, with the Gentiles and with the Amorites and the Moabites. And he said for them to, to come and let's reason together. Though your sin may be what? Red like scarlet, but I, I washed them white as snow. I, so we have to come to God admitting that we've been wrong. Come with a repentant heart. He said, if my people, if they are called by my name, if they're my people, they, done, they have gotten in trouble with God. He said, you tell it, read that verse 13. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If they, if they, if I do this because of their sin, then they need to come, my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. First, you got to become what? As a little child. Humble. Jesus said, except ye uh, come as a child, mm -hmm. you humble yourself. Don't come there trying to stand on, have a defense with God. You got no defense with God. That little defense you got put up, hey, don't mean a thing. Because God knows what each one of us, he knows where we are and he knows what we're doing. So you come with a, a, a repentant heart. Mm -hmm. You come being humble mm -hmm. and pray and seek my face and do what? Turn from my wicked ways. Turn from your. Turn. He said, if thou will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. Come confessing, <clears throat> telling God, God, you caught me. You caught me red-handed. You right, Lord. <laughs> you are right. I, I I have no defense. You are right. What you said, we I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't literally say it to you with his mouth, but through his word. He given us his word. 
He given us his covenant. His command came through his word. And we violated his word. He said, if they do this, situation can change. I will forgive. I will forgive. I, 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 the, the, the heavens will give out rain. You remember when the Israel had messed up so bad that God shut up the heavens. No rain until they turned around and 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 and, and after uh, God proved Himself through the hand of Elijah on Mount Carmel, and the people saw that Jezebel with all her eight hundred and fifty false prophets, God did not hear their cry. God did not answer them when they, and, and, and God definitely wasn't going to answer them. The God of the universe, they was calling on that God, which was Baal. And God wasn't, God know a statue can't answer you. They done went cut down a tree and shaped it like a man, a human being, and overlaid it with gold and bowed down to my, this is our God. Praying to a stump. And, 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 and Elijah told him, said, look, it's time for you, Israel, to make a decision. It's time for you to make a decision. Who you going to serve? You going to keep wishing, worshiping that idol? Or are you going to worship the God of the universe? Let's go to Mount Carmel. Let's go there and, and we're going to find out who God is. Elijah knew who God was. But Israel, the lifestyle that they were living, tell Elijah that you don't really know who God is. Mm -hmm. Folks said they know God and walk around smoking and cursing and lying. Yeah, I know the man. What man you know? It ain't God, because if you knew him, then you would honor him. You would turn from your sin. So God proved himself on Mount Carmel. And Israel turned back and started serving God. Because God showed himself mighty on Mount Carmel. And that's what God will do for us. If we sincere. If we sincere. God will show that. But if we stay in our mess. God says. You need to turn. Turn from your wicked way. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive what? How God going to forgive us of our sin if we don't confess? How can he? If I don't come and tell you, Cynthia, Mr. Wilson, I'm sorry for snapping at you. You, you can forgive me in your righteousness because of God, you will forgive me. But if I don't come and ask you, then I'm still in trouble with God. I'm still in trouble. I'm the one that offend you. So I'm the one supposed to come back and say, I'm sorry, daughter, I was wrong. And then you can say, I accept your apology. And we got it straight. But if, you, if I don't come and confess my, I was wrong, then how can God forgive us if we keep thinking that we are right and God then spoke in his word what is he required of us? All right. Did that help you, daughter? Any other questions? All right. I want to talk about something tonight, and I was I wanted to finish up. Uh, I wanted to finish up with uh, uh, what were we talking about? Repent, oh, preparing to meet God, preparing to meet your God. But uh, there's something that at the last minute got my attention. Now, so I need to get something cleared up here. Praise the Lord, Brother Denea. And, and I want to get something cleared up and debunk some of these theories or some of this doctrine or teaching that's out here. And we want to 
get to the root of this matter because, look, we're living in serious times now. Amen. We're living in serious times. And, and, and you know for yourself, things are happening, and it's strange things are happening. Very strange. And nobody, we don't have an answer. So this tell me that this thing is coming not from a man. This is coming from a higher power. Because mm. man can't even figure it out. Mm. We're in trouble. One calamity after another one. That tell me that God is upset. One calamity, every time we get, think we got this covered, something else happens. And I'm going to tell you, every time it happened, it affected our economy. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King said something in 1967, I never will forget this. He says, America, God's going to break your back. Mm -hmm. And the backbone of America is finance, My Lord. economy. We go all over the world paying people and making them do what we want them to do. And now, not only America, the whole world is at the point of a collapsing, mm -hmm. a financial breakdown. And, and, and every time something happens, it's working on that one particular item, the finance, economy, mm -hmm. economy. So we, we ought to take note. We ought to take note. God is trying to get our attention. And, and they keep propping up this stock market and keep lying to me. Ain't doing nothing but propping it up. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Diamond all I'm propping it up. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't know what's going on. But if you get into this thing, you'll find out that our economy is teeter-totting. Mm -hmm. It's teeter-totting. And it don't take but one more thing like 9-11 and it's going to come tumbling down. We're not, I hope that doesn't happen, but I tell you, we're living in dangerous time, and we have to, we can't be out here shooting in the dark. We can't be out here wasting our time, as Paul said, fighting the air. We got, every time we do something, we got to make it count. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to tear down Satan's kingdom. Hallelujah. Because he's building his kingdom off a line. Hallelujah. And we got spiritual leaderships are doing it. This Bible is right. All of whatever we need to know is in this Bible pertaining to salvation. I want to debunk this, 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 this. I don't know. Is it because of um, a lack of understanding? Men are not able to rightly divide the word of God. I'm not saying I'm a genius. I'm not saying that, but... But I know this much. I know God's plan of salvation. Amen. Because I read it in his, in his word. Yes. And you can't get me off of that. Amen. Can't get me off of that. I'm not. Uh, the, the, the songwriter said I'm like a tree planted by a river of water. Amen. I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Because I know what God's word is saying. And, and, and this, this, this thing about. Uh. 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 You don't have to speak in tongues to have the Holy Ghost. Where did that come from? Somebody, you can't take one scripture and isolate it from the other one. Uh, 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 uh. This, let's go to the 14th chapter of, uh, of uh, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. And, I, and I'm going to show you where the misunderstanding come in. The lack of understanding. That's why we have to stand before God and God counsel and get some understanding before we go running off half cocked. Start reading at that 14th verse, I mean the first verse of 1 Corinthians. Follow out the charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh it not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh in mysteries. Be he that prophesieth, speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. 
He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except the interpreter, that the church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine. And even things without life, given sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is a pipe or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak in the, in, into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore I know not the meaning of the voice. I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh it shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks? seeing he understandeth, and not what thou sayest. For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. All right, all right, let, let, let's just stop right there. Now, people have taken this, 14th chapter and said Paul is saying it's not necessary to speak in tongues. Now, let us understand what was going on. This is the church of Corinth. These people had already been filled with the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues. Paul ministered to these Paul is the one that, that started this church. You go back in the, <clears throat> I believe, the 18th chapter of uh, Acts, where Paul started this church. Paul went to Corinth. Them folk were so bad in Corinth. And they fought against Paul so that Paul was getting ready to leave there. And God told him, "Don't Jesus said, don't you leave. I got much peoples here. Them folks, it was terrible folks. You talking about terrible. They was almost in the state of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the kind of stuff that was going on in Corinth. And Paul was ready to get out of there and God said, no, I got much people here. And Paul stayed there for eight, a year and a half preaching this gospel and these folks got saved. How did they get saved? What did Paul preach to them? What got Paul saved? How did Paul get saved? What plan of salvation did Paul go through to get saved? Repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name, the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. That's how Paul got saved. You read that in the ninth chapter of Acts. When, when Paul received the Holy Ghost and God appointed Paul to be a, a preacher to the Gentiles. And he went preach to these people. Now, this is the church. He's talking to the church that they already saved. Mm -hmm. They already experienced the water baptism, repenting in the water baptism. They already received the tongue, speaking in tongue. But there was a problem in the church. There was some of them getting up and saying that they were supposed to be getting up to preach, and they was getting up speaking in tongue. Out of honor. And Paul said, that's out of honor. When you get up to preach, you're supposed to preach where people can understand they can be edified. 
You getting up here speaking in tongue and I know they don't know what you're talking about. You, 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 that, that's not getting the Holy Ghost. They already had the Holy Ghost, but they was getting up before the audience speaking in tongue and nobody knew what they were saying but God. So Paul said, I would rather speak one five words in English than to get up here speaking in tongue. I just speak in tongue. But who's going to edify? Who's going to be edified? So don't you get caught up in this. Some day going out and telling people, see, you don't have to speak in tongue. Amen. That's a lot from the pit. Mm -hmm. The initial, let's go back. Let's go back to the initial plan of, of salvation that God had. And this initial plan, you go back, you got to go all the way back to St. Matthew. Go back to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 17th verse. Somebody get it right quick. Get it right quick, somebody. Because I'm, I'm on the road. The 16th chapter of St. Matthew. And I believe I want the 17th, 16th chapter of St. Matthew. And and uh, and read that, start being that 17th verse. I think that's what I want. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right. Now, who said, who made this statement? Jesus is saying, I'm going to establish a church. All of those churches that was around there in Jerusalem, you had the temple there, you had the synagogues there. Why Jesus want to build a church? Why Jesus need to build a church? Because, huh? Because God was not pleased with what those ch the, the churches in Jerusalem. He wasn't pleased with it. They wasn't that wasn't God's plan of salvation. That the church, the, the doctrine, the, the learned teaching that they was getting out, that was to bring them up until Christ. Yes. The law was until who? Yes. Christ. And Jesus came a manifesting, making known the law through the words that he was preaching and teaching. He said, you know, the law and all the prophets, that was pointing to me. Amen. They was talking about me. I'm that lamb. Mm -hmm. I'm the lamb. John recognized that when he saw Jesus coming to Jerusalem. He said, behold, the lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. God said, I'm tired of bullocks, goats, and heifers. I don't want them anymore. Which said that I want you to present your body a living sacrifice. This is how you get into the church. So Jesus said, I'm going to build me a what? And the gates of hell shall not prevail. When was that church started? Go to the book of Acts, the second chapter. Now we going back to the principle. You know what the principle is? The, the, the principle is the, is the ultimate source. It's, it's the origin, the beginning of something. Foundational truth. When you build a, when you get ready to build a building, I'm trying, I want to make this thing plain. When you get ready to build a building, the first thing you do is lay the foundation. Because the foundation is going to support whatever you, you put on it. And you got to make sure that when you lay that foundation, that foundation got to be square. It's got to be the right length, the right width, the right height. Because the building that you put on it, it's got to be the same. And if that building is off in it, you're going to have a problem. So the foundation is already laid. The principle of getting into the church of Jesus Christ. You go back to the ultimate source. You don't come here in the middle of the church. 
and try to make a doctrine out of tongues. You got to go back to the principle, go back where it started, the source. And the source of the church getting started was on the day of Pentecost. Jesus said to them, I will build me a church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But in getting in this church, you have to be born again. <laughs> Jesus told Nicodemus that. Y'all read that in the third chapter of St. John. Marvel not, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a what? A religious leader. He was of the Judaism faith. And Jesus told him, Marvel not, you must be born again. Born of the water and born of the spirit. The water, the repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name. The spirit is the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. How do we know? How do we know that? Jesus told him in the 14th chapter of St. John, I'm going away. And he said, my father, I pray to the father that he'll send you the comforter. And when the comforter comes, it's going to give you power. It's going to give you power. It's going to give you power. Now this power that you give, how do I know? How do I know when this power will come? How do I know? Jesus said, in the, in, in the, go to the, 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 the Acts, the first chapter. Let, 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 let's hit St. John. St. John right quick. St. John, the, uh, who I want? St. John, the, the, uh, the uh, 14th chapter of St. John. Somebody get that. It's the 16th verse. 14 and 16. Somebody get that. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is lo that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, Not is it carried. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keep it in not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being, ye, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, Jesus is saying the comforter, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Ghost. That's the, what the comforter is. The comforter is nothing but the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God. That's what Jesus said. It's going to come. Now, Jesus told his disciples in the 24th chapter of St. Luke and the 46th verse, I believe. Someone get that and read it. I want you to listen to this yourself and read it yourself. Take these scriptures down. So when these folk come to you with that, that, that erroneous stuff, you can go to God's word. God, it makes sense. Doesn't make sense with this stuff that they putting out there and, and it's a, a, a fly by night salvation. St. Luke 24 and 46 says what? And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses. This is Jesus talking to the twelve disciples, his apostles. Read on. 
and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. He told him to go where? Go back to Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. The promise that I told you in the 14th chapter before I died. Now this is after Jesus rose from the dead. He met with his disciples after he rose from the dead. The 14th chapter it was before he died. He said, I'm going to pray to the Father to send you the comforter. And the comforter is the Holy Ghost. And they, when they left him, he ascended up into the heavens. He was on earth for 40 days. He walked on earth for 40 days after he rose from the dead. The 40th day he ascended up into heaven. Luke put it in the book right here so we could see it. And he told him he was going to pray and sit, that the Father would send the comforter. 50 days, 10 days after he ascended up into heaven, the day of Pentecost, which is the 50th day after he had ascended up into heaven, the Holy Ghost failed. Let's go to Acts. First, let's read Acts 1 and 8. Go to Acts 1 and 8. We're going to put this thing together. You can't take one script and isolate and try to build a doctrine on it. It takes the whole word of God, all of it. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You, after you receive the Holy Ghost, this Holy Ghost keep popping up. Mm -hmm. This Holy Ghost is emphasis putting on this Holy Ghost. If you want to get into the church of Jesus Christ, you got the end. You, the only way you can get in is through repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, and the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. This is the church that Jesus talked about in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew that he was going to what build. Mm -hmm. He taught 12 men the, 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 the plan of salvation, yeah. and they are giving this plan of salvation to us now. It's written in the book. They wrote it in the book. And this is the plan. Now Jesus talked with him. He's ascending up in heaven. Go, let's go to the second chapter of Acts. In the first verse. Second chapter of Acts in the first verse. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. And the fiftieth day had fully come. This is what happened. This is the church that Jesus started. This is the, when the church knows that y'all allow me to say this. The church door of Jesus Christ was open. Mm -hmm. all, it don't say nothing about the temple. It don't say nothing about all those synagogues that was in Jerusalem. This is dealing with the church that Jesus Christ said he was going to open. Read. They, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the principle. This is the origin. This is the beginning. This is the source of where the tongues come from. This is the source. This is what, this is the purpose. This is the evidence 
of being born again. This is the evidence of saying I received the Holy Ghost. Amen. This plain and simple. All we got to do is say, Lord, help me to understand it. I ran it now. Help me to understand it. Enlighten me. Yeah. Illuminate my mind. Help me to receive this. Jesus told them, so you go back, go to Jerusalem, and you stay there. Until, didn't y'all just read that in the 24th chapter of St. Luke? Yes. You stay there till you be endured with power from on high. Ten days later after you sent it, the Holy Ghost fell. The day of Pentecost, Pentecost means 50. 50 days after you sent it up into heaven, the Holy Ghost fell. And it came, and there was 120 people up in the upper room when it fell. And the Bible said, did what? As clothing tongues lit up on them. All of them was in there. Hit one, it just came in and hit one, hit it, and they all started speaking in tongues. That was the power of God. Read. Chapter 2, verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which spake Galileans? Listen, now, now I hope you're picking this up. These was Galilean speaking and there were 17 nations at Jerusalem at that time. Because they all had come from all over the world at that point to celebrate the feast, Passover, and all the other feasts. And they was from different parts of the world. And they said, isn't this strange? Strange. These are Galileans, but they're speaking in our language. These are Galileans. But they're speaking in tongue, and this tongue is not their native language. It's our native language. They're speaking unknown, it's unknown tongues to them, to, to the, the Galileans, but those nations that were there, they understood it. Amen. Now, this is the initial. This is, you got to go back to the principle of where this started. You got to go back to the source. You got to go back to the foundation. Don't get in the middle of the church and try to twist things around. Amen. You go back to the source. You will never get the truth by starting in the middle. Amen. You got to go back to the foundation. Hallelujah. Go back to the source. Go back to the principle. Go back to the origin of the start of this thing. This is the church that Jesus said he was going to build. Amen. It started here. Uh, drop down to where I want to go to. Uh, I got some notes here. Let's go down, drop down to uh, verse 37, 36. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? All right, let's go to verse uh, 30, 34, 36, 36, 35, 35. I get it. I'm trying, I'm trying to save some time. Verse 35. This is this is all during the message that that uh Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. You got it, Doc? Yeah. Read. Until I make thy foes thy footstool, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, you can go back and read it, the, uh, uh, the rest of it. Peter preached an entire message to those people that wanted to know what is going on. What is all this tongue talking about? They, they wanted to know what's going on. We hear these people speaking our language. So Peter went and started start a message. 
and he preached the message. He went all the way back to the beginning. And he brought it all the way up to the period and time that they was there now. And he said, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. You all, Jesus came and you all rejected him. Y'all killed him. He was the Prince of Peace. He the one that brought the plan of salvation. He the one that John said, behold the Lamb of God coming to take away the sins of the world. And y'all killed him. You Jews. Y'all killing him. Y'all rejecting him. He came to his own, and his own did what? Received him, received him not. And to men as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Amen. And how you come become the sons of God? By being born again. Repent of your sin and being born again. Yes. And receiving God's spirit. Now you are in his kingdom. Read on, Doc. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can get the same thing that we got. It, 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 it didn't change. The plan of salvation didn't change in a few days. That's right. It remained the same. We got to go back to when the church started. And how did it start? What happened? What, what went down? Go back to the source. Don't get in the middle of the game and try to figure it out. You can't. You got to go all the way back to the source. And this is the foundation of the church that Jesus Christ said he was going to build. Read. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. This is for who? For the, this is only for the Jews. This is, no, no, y'all ain't got no business speaking in tongues. That was for the Jews only. Tongues are gone now. You don't need no tongue. That's a lie from the pit. Amen. If, 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 that, if, if, if Peter lied, then you know what then happened? Jesus put the wrong man in charge. Because he made Peter the chief apostle. Mm -hmm. Now, if Peter wrong, then Jesus was wrong. Jesus put Peter in charge. He taught Peter. Peter knew who the father was. Peter knew the plan of salvation. Peter knew what he had to do. Peter knew when, when, when Jesus said, go preaching this gospel throughout the nation, baptizing in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Peter knew exactly what he was talking about. That's why Peter told him. They said, what shall we do? He said, repent. And be baptized in whose name? Because Jesus had told him remission of sin, repentance, remission of sin should be preached in whose name? Peter was carrying out the order that he got from Jesus. We got to go back to the principle. We can't let these folks out here deceive us. This Bible, read on. He said, To many as the Lord that God shall call, and to, to you and who? And as even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now tell me something. <laughs> he said, Many that, them that, Gladly received the word was baptized. How was they baptized? How was they baptized? Don't y'all be scared to say it. Peter, the one was preaching. Peter told him. Peter gave him the, the answer. He gave.
gave them the, 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 the solution to the problem. He said, repent every one of you and be baptized in whose name? Amen. And they gladly obeyed it. They didn't fight against it. They gladly received it. And by them receiving it, they were obedient to the word. They were baptized in Jesus' name. They received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues just like Peter and them did. And they were they said 3,000 souls was added to the church. How you get added to the church? Huh? You got to go through the process. You go to, back to the foundation. You go back to the foundation. Because that's what Peter taught. It would be a sin for me to teach y'all to live holy and I don't live holy. It would be a sin for me to tell you that you got to be baptized in Jesus' name, and I don't be baptized in Jesus' name. Hey, you can say, oh, that guy's a phony. He said one thing and do something else. You had your hand up, preacher. Uh, uh, Pastor, uh, could you do the 39th verse again? Because they do tell the people that this is only for the Jews. I thought I hit that. You did, but I mean... Uh, he said, for the promise is unto you, and to your children. That was talking to the Jews. This is for you and your children. And to all that are far off. Who was the one that was far off? Gentiles. Us Gentiles. God had a plan for us. In, 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 in Isaiah, I think the 46th chapter. Said there was going to be a light that comes from to the Gentiles. And Jesus said in that 10th chapter of St. John, he said, other sheep that I have that are not of this fold. He was talking to the Jews. He said, them will I also bring into this plan of salvation. Who will bring them? He was talking about the Gentiles. Amen. And now you're going to tell, you got some of these well-known preachers got all kind of doctrine and degree and telling you, you don't have to speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost... Uh, the, 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 the tongues are, are, are outdated now. <laughs> Who are you to change this? Who gave you that authority? God established that in his book. It's in his word. And Jesus said, not one jot or till of God's word shall fall. Either we going to change, God not going to change for us. We the one going to have to change. Hallelujah. Got to get this thing right. Go back to the principle. Go back to the foundation. Go back where it originated from. Tired of these lying folks. Messing with God's people. Messing God's people's mind up. Read on. He says, uh, the, where, where the, for, what, what verse were we at? As many as the Lord our God shall call. And in this book, you're going to see God call some mother folks besides the, 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 the Jew. In this book, he called the Samaritan. In this book, he called the Gentiles. Into this plane. Read on. Verse 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Who doctrine? The apostles' doctrine. What did the apostles teach? What did the apostles teach? Come on, y'all. Don't, don't freeze up on me. That's what the apostles taught. Repentance. Water baptism in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. That's what they taught. Now, who, who, who gave them permission? Who gave us? Our late comers to come in and change what God's word has already established. It's written in heaven. Who gave you permission to change it? Oh, you want the fields in your church. And they're in there now. And their life haven't changed. Because they have not obeyed the scripture. They have not followed the foundation of the principle. Yes, preacher. And we're still in that dispensation of, of grace. Yes. The same 
we, 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 we haven't got out of that yet. And we won't get out of it until Jesus come and rapture the church. And when Jesus raptured the church out of here, then during the tribulation period, there's a new gospel that's going to be preached. That's in your Bible, in Revelation. There's going to be another gospel that be preached. Now, I don't know what that gospel is going to be. But right now, the gospel is the Pentecost apostolic gospel. And that's repentance, while baptism in Jesus' name, the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and living a holy life. That's what God is requiring right now. Read on. That's the apostolic doctrine. That's the apostle doctrine. He said they continued. They didn't change. Now, who gave you the authority to change it? They said they continued. That 42nd verse says what? Read that again, doc. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And we want to change things. Mm -hmm. We didn't come along and say, well, you know, all that ain't necessary. Mm -hmm. All that ain't necessary. Right quick, let us go to the, the, the uh, Acts, the uh, eighth chapter of Acts. Let's go to the eighth chapter of Acts. Start reading at the fifth verse. And send to give me, okay. somebody else give me Acts 10 and 44. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there were great joy in that city. Skip but, down to verse 12. I'm just trying to save some time. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simeon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which go, were done. You go to verse 21. Thou hast No, no, verse 20. I'm sorry, verse 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Now, what happened here, that was a sorcerer, mm -hmm. just like we got them today. They going around bewitching the people. They're telling people, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. And the word of God plainly said that. This is what Simon was doing, the sorcerer. He had folk following him. He had to bewitch the people, had the people thinking they was all right. And when Philip came there and started preaching Jesus Christ, and those folk believed that, they repented, and they turned to God. And now Simon, the sorcerer, he see the power that Peter and them was, was exuding from them and laying hands on the folks, and the folks being healed and receiving the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Now Simon saying, how much can I pay to get that? Can I pay? Can I buy this? When Peter rebuked him. You, you wicked man, you. This thing can't be bought. This is of God. You can't buy God. Peter rebuked him. Some of these folk all right teaching this mess need to be rebuked. Need to be rebuked. Because you mess with God people. These are God people you leading astray. Yes. Jesus said you press land and sea to make one postulate come and you make him twofold worse than what he was. Amen. At least he was kind of believing God. Now you done come in and start putting a lot of this foolish in his head and got him where? Got them before way off somewhere and got him out in space. Yes. Read on. Verse 21, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps he thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. 
Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which he has spoken come upon me. Now, that's good. See, now, you, when you get tell these, I, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about something I have to When you tell these people what the scripture said, they won't do like Simon. Simon said, pray for me. Pray that I get it right. They get mad at you. These preachers will get angry with you and, and all you, you, you looking for a sign and all that. Yeah, I'm looking for a sign. Amen. We all ought to be looking for a sign. A sign when the Holy Ghost comes, we ought that's give it that's a sign. It should be a sign come with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost come with tongue. Yeah. Chapter of, 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 of Acts, and I'm closing out. 10th chapter of Acts, and, and give me the, the 44th verse. This was a Gentile that received the Holy Ghost. 10 and 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hold it now. These here was pure bloody Jews. These were pure bloody Jews that came with Peter. They came with Peter to a Gentile house. This Gentile was seeking God. He was a Gentile. He was seeking God. He was a good man. He was a noble man, but he didn't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. He was seeking God. And God dispatched an angel from heaven and told him, go down to Simon Taylor House. I got a man that up by the name of Peter. He will come and tell you what you need to do. Peter came and preached to Cornelius and his whole house. When Peter finished preaching, he finished preaching. Where am I at now? Where, where am I? He finished preaching. Peter said, uh, 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 go back to the 38th verse right quick, darling. This is pre part of the message. 38th verse. Of the same chapter? Yeah. Okay. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. All them that was in Cornelius' house, Cornelius had went, got all his kin folks. Everybody was waiting to hear what Peter had to say. And when Peter preached that message and let them to know that it was Jesus Christ and they believed it, the Holy Ghost, they believed the words that Peter spoke. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word and read on. 45, and they of the circumcision. And the Jews that came with Peter, those were the circumcision. They were the Jews that came with Jesus. They, these are the ones that already had been filled with the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues. They came with Peter. And they are sitting there watching these Gentiles as the Holy Ghost fall on them and they began to speak in tongues. The Gentiles, read. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Stop right there. Just that one verse alone. What made these uncircumcised Jews, what made these circumcised Jews feel that the Holy Ghost had fell on Cornelius? What gave them that idea? Evidently, they heard them speaking in tongues. 
The Holy Ghost come with tongues. The Holy Ghost come with tongues. The Holy Ghost is not a silent thing. It happened on the day of Pentecost when it first fell into the church as a whole. When the doors of the church was open, it came speaking in tongues. Go back to the foundation. Go back to the original. Go back to the principle scriptures. And somebody done run over here in the 14th chapter of Corinthians and pick that up and tell about you don't have to speak in tongues. See, Paul said, Paul was talking to the church. You had people getting up in church, supposed to be preaching, prophesying, preaching that the people would be edified those that listen with everybody, they getting up there blah, 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 and speaking in tongues. Paul said, you cut that out. You're not helping them folks. You're not helping the people. Some barbarian, some parent person coming here, don't know nothing about this apostle. And they see up you up there speaking in tongues. They gonna say, that's more crazy. You're supposed to be up there preaching so the people can be edified. Uh, we are to build. People. We are the people are to be, when they come to the house of God, they ought to hear the word. And be edified of that word to build them up, to energize them, Amen. to bring them into the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Read on. 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And I close the book. Amen. So you have enough. You heard enough tonight. And you got scriptures to convince you that you need the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues. Once that's the initial. Once you do that, then you got to go about to live holy. You have to go about to live holy. Because that's what the Holy Ghost comes to give you power so that you can live holy. And it comes by the evidence of speaking in tongues. Don't let nobody deceive you. We got a lot of deceitful folks in this world. Paul told us they was going to come. Amen. Grievous wars going to come among God people. And Paul said to the church of Ephesus and the leaders... He said, feed the flock of God which the Holy Ghost had made you oversee. Hallelujah. Don't let folk come in and mess up God, folks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not angry. I'm just zealous for God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, it's time for us to speak the truth. It's time to enlighten God, folks. Yes. Stop yes. these people making merchandise of God, people. God bless you. May heaven continue to 